welcome to Avery's Cream Vlog. A blessed Sunday to all of you. Before may we start, gusto ko lang pong i-share yung ating napakagandang Bible verse today. Mark 11 verse 24. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. If this is your first time to watch my video, just click the subscribe button below and hit the bell button beside so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video regarding Criminologies Licensure Examination Review here on my channel. about the methods of heat transfer, the products of combustion, and the fire behavior. Now, we have our first question. It is the transfer of heat which requires physical contact between the bodies or portions of bodies exchanging heat. Letter A, conduction. Letter B, convection. Letter C, radiation. And letter D, heat transfer. Ang sagot po natin dyan is letter A po. That is conduction po. Pag sinasabi po nating methods of heat transfer or modes of heat transfer, we have four. The number one is conduction, the second one is convection, and the number three that is radiation, and we have the last one that is flame contact. So we have four methods of heat transfer po. Pag sinasabi po nating conduction po, the heat transferred within a contacting solids po. Take note na ang keyword natin po dito sa conduction is yung tinatawag natin na direct contact. Merong direct contact yung dalawang solid fuel kaya po na-transfer yung heat natin dyan. Let's take yung alambre as an example po. So for example po, this is an alambre. Now, yung other side of alambre po nilagay mo sa source of heat. Pero yung heat po is naramdaman mo pa rin na nakahawak sa other side of the alambre. So yan po ang example ng conduction po. Ang isang example pa ng conduction is habang nagluluto po tayo, nahawakan natin po yung takip ng kaldero is mainit po. So, example din po yan ng conduction. Ang next method of heat transfer po natin is yung tinatawag natin na convection po. Sa convection po, yung heat traveled through a circulating medium, usually air or liquid po. Ang example po ng convection is tumapat ka po sa ibabaw ng kumukulong tubig. Hindi mo naman hinawakan yung kumukulong tubig pero bakit naramdaman mo pa rin ang init? That explained to us by the convection po. Ulitin ko po ha, kapag sinasabi po natin convection, ang heat is transferred through the movement of a hot gases or liquid po. Now, ang next method of heat transfer natin is yung tinatawag natin na radiation. So, simple lang po ang radiation. Ang radiation po, the heat is transferred by means of electromagnetic waves. Kapag sinasabi po natin electromagnetic waves, that pertains to the light po. Example po ng radiation is yung rays of the sun po. So, kapag lumabas po tayo at nainitan po tayo ng heat rays of the sun, nararamdaman po natin na mainit, it explained to us by the radiation po. Ang another example po is yung flashlight po. So, yung flashlight ng motor po, itapat mo yung kamay mo malapit sa ilaw ng motor. So, nararamdaman natin na mainit, that explained to us by the radiation po. Ang another one po is na method of heat transfer is yung tinatawag natin na flame contact po. Kapag sinasabi mo natin flame contact, the heat is transferred by the direct flame contact po. Take note na, ang keyword po sa flame contact is direct flame contact po. So for example po, itong dalawang papel po. So this is paper A and this is paper B. So si paper A po is nasusunog po yan. Si paper B po is hindi po nasusunog yan. So within these spaces po sila. Ayan. So ngayon po, itong paper A na nasusunog po, ngayon nagkaroon po ng hangin. Now the... Flame of the paper A po reaches paper B po. 
So as aerosol po ng pagka reach po ng flame ni paper A sa paper B po, the paper B now is burning po. Okay? So yan na po yung sinasabi natin na flame contact po. So ngayon po, kapag naman po nagkaroon ng hangin at natumba po itong paper A na nasusunog and nagkaroon po ng direct contact with the paper A and paper B, then as a result po, yung paper B po is nasunog, that explained to us by the conduction naman po. Kasi nagkaroon po tayo ng direct contact between two solids po. Sa flame contact po, wala po tayong direct contact between solids. Ang tayong meron po tayo dyan is yung direct flame contact po na sinasabi natin. We have our next question. It is the manifestation of fire when it is in gas phase combustion. Letter A, ember. Letter B, smoke. Letter C, light. And letter D, flame. Ang sugot po natin dyan is letter D po. That is flame po. Take note po lang, flame is a burning gas. That is a luminous body of burning gases po. Ang smoke po, flame, heat, and etc. po, ay tinatawag po natin na products of combustion po. Take note po na ang smoke is tinatawag po natin na product of incomplete combustion po. Now, kailangan po ba na magkaroon po tayo ng flame para may matawag po tayong fire? The answer is no po. So, hindi po kailangan na always na may flame para magkaroon po tayo ng fire. So, ang example po dyan is yung tinatawag natin na ember. So, ano po yung ember? That is a baga po. Sa ember po, meron po tayong burning dyan pero wala pong flame. So, there is a rapid oxidation sa ember po na tinatawag natin. Now, anong kulay ng flame po ang tinatawag po natin na pinakamainit po? Okay? So, what is the hottest flame po? That is, anong kulay? That is white po. White is the hottest flame. Ang sunod po dyan is yellow followed by the orange and then red po. Marami po tayong types of flame. Kapag ang pinag-uusapan po natin is based on color and completeness of the combustibility of the fuel, we have luminous flame at saka non-luminous flame po. Kapag sinasabi po natin luminous flame, that is orange-red po ang kulay. Then take note po na ang luminous flame deposit soot because it is a product of incomplete combustion. Kapag sinasabi naman natin na non-luminous flame, that is bluish in color po. Ang non-luminous flame does not deposit soot because it is a product of complete combustion. Take note po na mas mainit ang ating non-luminous flame kaysa sa luminous flame po natin. Now, meron din po tayong tinatawag na types of flame based on the smoothness. There we have the laminar flame at saka turbulent flame. Kapag sinasabi po natin laminar flame, yan po yung tinatawag natin na smooth flame because it follows a smooth path po. Okay? So, kapag sinasabi naman natin na turbulent flame, ang turbulent flame po is unsteady flame, irregular po yung ating turbulent flame po. Take note po na ang turbulent flame natin is unstable po. Pagalaw-galaw po ang turbulent flame natin. Now, punta naman tayo sa fire behavior and we have our question. It refers to the rising movement or pattern of fire. The normal behavior when the fire is undisturbed. Letter A, thermal balance. Letter B, thermal imbalance. Letter C, thermal agitation. And letter D, flame. Anong sagot po natin dyan? That is letter A po. That is thermal balance po. From the word balance. Take note po kapag sinasabi natin thermal balance, take note of the word normal pattern po. Okay? So, normal pattern po ang behavior ng ating fire sa thermal balance. Ano po ulit yung normal na pattern po ng fire natin? That is V-shape po. Okay? V-shape po ang movement ng ating apoy. Bakit V-shape po? Kasi ang apoy po moves upward and outward po. Kapag sinasabi naman nating thermal imbalance, yan po yung abnormal behavior of fire due to the interference of foreign matter in that fire. So halimbawa po dyan, kapag nasusunog po yung isang room natin, so binuhusan natin po ng tubig yung highest part of that room po. Now, ang movement na po ng apo is pwedeng pagalaw-galaw na po, papuntang sa side by side na po yung apoy. Okay? Hindi na po pataas yung movement ng apoy. So, magkakaroon na po tayo ng abnormal behavior of fire or abnormal pattern of fire. Yan na po yung tinatawag natin na thermal imbalance po. Another question po tayo. It is the sudden ignition of accumulated radical gases produced when there is incomplete combustion of fuels. There will be a very intense fire that is capable of travel into a hundred yards within a few seconds. Letter A, flash fire. 
letter B, flash over, letter C, back draft, letter D, bite back. Anong sagot po natin dito? That is letter B po. That is flash over. Anong pinagkaiba po ng flash over at saka back draft? Actually po, yung mga to is na-discuss ko na po sa aking previous video entitled Far Stages and Paces po. Pero ngayon, papasadaan pa natin. So ngayon po, kapag sinasabi nating flash over, yan po yung tinatawag natin na sudden ignition. Take note of the word sudden ignition or burning. Yan po yung sudden ignition or burning of the accumulated radical gases po. And will produce a very intense fire that is capable of travel into a hundred yards po. O kaya yung tinatawag natin na magkakaroon po tayo ng fireball sa ating flash over. Kapag sinasabi naman po nating backdraft, take note na ang backdraft po is may dalawa po tayong keyword dyan. Una, that is sudden introduction of oxygen. Pangalawa, that is an explosion. Ang backdraft po is the sudden introduction of oxygen into a superheated fuel under pressure causing an explosion po. Take note po na nangyayari lang po ang backdraft sa isang confined space or room or sa bahay po. So ngayon po, anong pace po ng fire kung saan pwedeng mangyari ang backdraft? Sa incipient pace ba? Sa pre-burning pace ba? O kaya sa smoldering pace? Saan po nangyayari, nangyayari dyan? Ang backdraft po is nangyayari po dyan sa smoldering pace po. Okay, so take note po sa isang room po na under smoldering pace na po. ba diba, wala na po tayong oxygen dyan? O meron man tayong oxygen but is, it is a only 12% of oxygen na yan. And hindi na po yan kayang isupport po yung fire po. Ang meron po dyan is hot smoke or dense smoke. Toxic gases like carbon monoxide and super heated fuel. Ang backdraft po is the result of improper ventilation po. Under smoldering phase po kasi, gumagawa po tayo dyan ng tinatawag natin na ventilation. So ano po ang ventilation? Yan po ang isang important tactic in the firefighting operation po. That is the displacement of hot smoke or toxic gases or vapor po in exchange of fresh air coming from outside sources po. Ang ventilation po is may dalawang klase. That is vertical ventilation or horizontal ventilation. Kapag sinasabi nating vertical ventilation, it work from top to bottom, okay? So ang ventilating opening natin or ang ventilate opening natin is ginagawa po 'yan sa roof ng isang structure po. Ang Horizontal ventilation naman is tinatawag po nating lateral ventilation o kaya cross ventilation. Yan ay ginagawa po yan with the opening or removal of the windows sa ah, isang structure naman po. Kapag improper po yung pagkagawa ng ating ventilation, that will cause an explosion and tinatawag po natin na backdraft po. Okay? Ang bite back naman po, yan po ay fatal condition kung saan po yung fire resist the extinguishment operation at mas lalong lumaki at lumakas pa yung apoy. That is the bite back po na sinasabi natin. And we have the last one, that is flash fire. Ang flash fire naman, that is a dust explosion po. Okay? Na magresulta po kapag yung lightning will hit a metal post that is completely covered with dust po. Okay? Then, as a result po dyan, magkakaroon po tayo dyan ng violent chemical reaction followed by flash and then followed by an explosion po. Kaya tinatawag po natin na dust explosion ang ating flash fire po. Ayan po, salamat po sa pakikinig. And for your information, kung may request po kayo na video discussion para sa review po ninyo ng criminologist licensure examination, Just comment that specific topic to the comment section below po. And if you want more videos like this, just visit my channel A Freeze Cream Blog. So kung may natutunan po kayo sa video ng ito, just click the subscribe button and hit the bell button so that you will be notified every time I upload a new video regarding criminology board exam review purposes po. Keep safe po kayo palagi. See you on my next videos and God bless you.